Good morning. It is another day of working in the shop. We are working on the banana, but first we've got to clean up this disaster of a mess. The weekend came like it, it blindsided us. And we had jobs, we had editing, we had thrashing on the banana going. There was all kinds of stuff happening. And I wasn't here for it. I haven't been here since did, Wednesday. Did you get your calves branded? No. It was too cold. Too cold. All it was right. too cold. That would have warmed him up. Easter Jeep Safari is right around the corner and I have got to challenge Colt from Bleepin' Jeep to a wheel off, XJ style, but he's got rat's nest. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited yeah. about this new welding helmet. The skull was like not my thing, but America can't go So the skull's going in the wrecker. Yeah. All right, so Tom Tom asked you what trail we should test the banana on. It was between slip lock, triple sevens and yeah. the shoot. You guys responded, you wanted us to do all of them. Mostly triple sevens, but some of you even wanted me to drive backwards up the shoot like Rory does. Darn that Rory, yeah. making our life harder. <laughs> Thanks Rory for doing that. So now we're gonna have to do it. But we can't do any of that till we get this running. Okay, we have got stuff all over the Western United States that we need picked up for this. So we're gonna be sending Lizzie, she's gonna be going to Ace, she's gonna be going to the parts store, O'Reilly's probably, to get some parts for this. We've got parts at Six State that need to be picked up and parts at Adams Drive Shop in Las Vegas. We don't have time for them to overnight them. Lizzie needs to run down there and grab those. It's gonna be a fun day. This is a true table for Corvair heads. But since I'm out of the Corvair head rebuilding business, we're going to repurpose it. Yeah, so we've got to build. We've got to build a thing. We've got a couple questions on where we got this little welding table from right here. And this is from Miller. So it's a good sized table for a crowded shop. Okay, Tom, suit up. We're welding a jig. So what we're doing here is we're re-drilling these hubs so that we have the correct bolt pattern. The 05 is a metric and we don't want that. We want the eight and six and a half. Barnes makes this awesome jig for doing this. I think you can do it freehand with a drill, but we're gonna put it in the mill because we like precision and accuracy. This, this mill is not as bad as the drill press. It is one step above the world's worst drill press. So it'll probably get this job done. It's a little sketchy, but I think it'll get it. Now I'm an ace and I need to get a snap ring for this axle. Matt told me to get the size bigger and the size smaller, but this is the biggest they got and I think, I think it's the right size. So I'm gonna get two of these because that's what we need and we'll see if they fit. That gonna work? Perfect. Awesome. Well, it worked. <laughs> yeah. So let's see the bolts. We got the bolts right here. Try one in there. It's the right one. Perfect. Mm. They came in a two pack. They got the right flavor of Loctite. Okay, this is the brake. Hardware stuff. Yeah. All the squeal clips. What kind of banjo fitting does it take? Standard. So wait a minute. You had us get four rotors. We're gonna have to drill out the rotors. I They're not gonna bolt on. Ford rotors won't bolt on. They won't slip on because we're drilling out to the to the standard. Get them on there. Pattern. Let's see. They might. They might. 
They I, might I because they might be hub centric. Let's get okay, one let's out. See. All right. Yes. I think they fit. Yeah, they fit now. I think they're gonna fit. Yeah. They almost fit. They're not. You don't think they're hub centric? It looked like it was loose. Yes, they are upcentric, so we can just drill these holes out bigger. Okay, I'm heading out. All right, drive safe. Will do. See you in a bit. We did it. Yeah. We got one done, I think. So while Tom sets up the next one, I'm going to start pounding these out and pounding them back in. Oh, yeah. You got a way to do that? No. I'm nervous. This, this is the hammer. Oh, that's not, it's too little. We do need to get a new one of these. We're going to need to go to Schultz since it's definitely reaming it though. This is working. All right, we're all the way down. I'm happy with that. We just have to ream all these holes and press these in and we'll be good. We'll be good. So we did all that precision work so we can just grab the drill and ream them by hand? Yes. Let's go get the drill bit. So even though wallowing works, Tom says we're not going to do it. We're going to go get the right size drill bit. We've got to go to lunch in a minute. That's when we'll get the drill bits to finish the hubs. But while we're waiting for lunch to get here, we're going to just install one of these hubs to see if we're smart enough to do it. We're kind of doing things out of order just because that's how we do it to confuse you. Let me see the bolt. Looks like it may line up. All right, so I think we've got these ball joint deletes stacked up correctly. We're just gonna tighten them up and see if they still work when we get them tight. This whole setup is made by American Iron, and if you'd like to go check out their parts, you can go to their website right here. This is the perfect project for us because there's a little bit of precision and a little bit of just winging it. There's a lot of winging it. Redrilled completely. So let's get the red lock tight and put these studs in. They're all in that yeah, bin. And then we can attach it to the knuckle. Yeah. The permanency of red lock tight. Okay, pop that thing in there. We're gonna see if these actually fit. No, they fit. Never had a doubt. Hey Tom, what's <clears throat> doing? I'm pulling out the rag that was stuffed in here to keep all the slag from welding out of the axle. It's a good thing we did that. Yeah, it was genius. Ooh, that one got crispy. Never hammer on a bearing, Matt. That's what we read. All right, let's get that long axle. Let's put this together. Check okay, the remember you gotta check the gears. First, second, third, fourth, reverse. This is where we find out if we measured, cut, and fabricated the housing properly. It's all gotta come together. Right now. Or not. You don't have any ramps, so feed it good. It's got a ramp. There it is. 
So here's the question. What's the question? Are we through the center of that joint? I hope so. Me too. Okay. So is that binding up? What are you feeling there? Yeah. You don't like? it's, it's binding. It's totally this won't quite even close. So I think a quarter inch will do it. Let me show you what's going on with these inner axles. So, all right, so ignore, ignore these outers. We're not using that style anymore. We're using this style. So we narrowed the housing so that we could use, this is a Snow King axle out of a- 78 Ford. Ford. 78 Ford Snow King. And then this is the Yukon replacement axle for the, the axle that we're using. So because the way these seals work, on these, the seal surface is just barely machined down from the shaft size. And they, they made this seal surface really long. So we cut an inch off of this and we're still really happy on the seal area. And if we weren't, we could, machine this, take this to a machine shop, and they would machine that down to get it further. The problem with this Snow King one is the axle is slightly smaller diameter than the seal. So once we're off the seal area, we're off the seal area. It's, yeah, all your gear lube would just leak out the end of the axle too. Yeah. That would be sad. Yeah. What do you, you want to take off like an eighth of an inch? Like a, like a yeah, blade width? Let's take off an eighth of an inch and see what happens. See if it goes together. If it does, then we're done. Yeah. We're done till it starts leaking. reading last time yeah you got more to take off than or did you not push it in all the way I pushed it in all the way let's bolt it up you're fine now we can put the c-clip on here uh, should we grab that you want to do it or is it coming back apart it shouldn't be coming back apart for any reason okay yes Center's up. <laughs> so these holes are too big and sloppy anyway on the other one. We're just making them bigger and sloppier so they fit the new lug pattern that we put on. If you're not sure if we should be doing this, then you definitely shouldn't be doing this. Okay. Cast iron drill's so nice. Look at your chips. Yeah. All right. Let's do a hub assembly. And let's look at the brakes. I'm just figuring out how. Okay, if you push it in, it's disengaged. So right there is, en is engaged. I'm trying to turn the whole axle shaft. But if I push it in, it's disengaged. All right, I think we got that figured out. We need this cap. With or without instructions, man. No, no instructions. Oh, they come with their own Molly grease? Yes. Black Molly. Yes. Looks used, huh? Okay, there it goes. Feels good. What does it say it is? 
Okay, it's freewheel. It's locked. Since we're on final assembly, I'm going to tighten these up to like a real spec. tight but now and now it's working just like it should that looks comically big on this little Jeep let me tell you the positives and negatives as I see them positive this is going to lower my center of gravity another positive it's gonna put more weight on the front wheels which will make it better for rock crawling like climbing up things and getting over them negatives is it's more weight just more weight and that's negative in the sand but the banana does phenomenally in the sand so I'm thinking a couple hundred pounds of extra weight is a good trade-off for better brakes, more stability, and better uh, rock climbing ability. There's one more huge one. You're never going to break U-joints and axle shafts again. Oh yeah, that's another big, big one. So yeah, I'm trading a little bit of weight for a lot of good things. It looks new and fancy. Yeah, looks heavy. Be a lot stronger. Big old brakes. Oh, our axle shaft arrived. Woohoo! It's a spice or something. No time. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time for that. That's what we needed. This. Yes. Try grease? Yeah. Wow, that is not helping, is it? Mm -hmm, I'm not seeing anything. You wanna... Holy smokes. Okay, hold this back here. We are 11 and 9 sixteenths. We are nine and five eighths. Nine and five eighths is right there. We're bottoming. It's time to break out the old grinder. This is a little Matt, one of Matt's little tricks that is not approved. But it works. Well, here it is, such as it is. Never do this. Yes. Yeah, if you're not okay with this, please don't do this. We're not okay either, but we've already done it. <laughs> he wasn't even here to celebrate with me. It went in all the way? I think it did. Significantly further. Further than it did. Pull it out and see if the seal marks. Let's get a magic marker on those. All right, here's the. Our machinist blue dye. I don't know, it looks like the same spot, but. Well, I was able to pull it out that time. I guess we should have measured that. How oh, far? we can, we have that measurement. Yeah, we're definitely, we're definitely in further. So let's see what we got. Yeah, let's put it together. Okay. Put that bearing on. Yeah. It looks. It looks seated. Seated all the way around. Okay. Now. Does it move back and forth okay? It's not binding anymore? Mm -mm. No binding. We probably didn't need to do that spline trick. I don't know if we need to or not. We cut an axle we didn't need to on that side, made some splines on this one we didn't need to. We just like it was, turns out it was just our incompetence. Now that we got this done, we're going to continue on with the brakes just like we did on the other side. All right, after driving two and a half hours to Las Vegas, I finally made it. I just pulled into Adam's drive shaft, so now we're gonna go pick it up. Looky there, it says Adam's drive shaft. That looks awesome. Sure, Smell up where you want it. Cool, 
Thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you coming down. All Looky right. there, Adam's drive shaft. Now let's head back to the shop, and we're gonna get there just like that. Let's go give it to Matt. Look at that thing. I need you to load the wrecker back on the trailer. Oh boy. Do this. Oh, I love this drive shaft. <laughs> What Tom's doing right now is calculating the new volume of the front calipers, super boring stuff, and making sure that we have the right master cylinder so that when we step on the brakes, the Jeep stops. I think it's very unnecessary. It's absolutely necessary that we know exactly how much better our pedal feel is gonna be after we put in this master cylinder. I gotta walk around and figure out what we need. All right, we increased our caliper diameter, our caliper area 15%, but we increased our master cylinder 26%. So our brakes are gonna feel 11% better. Because they're not adequate right now because we've got the stock XJ master cylinder and we've been running it that way for a long time. And we had the bigger disc brakes up front and we added the big disc brakes in the rear. The banana brake pedals always felt a little like, well, like a rotten banana. Um, now it's gonna be like a green banana. We showed a video of uh, Peanut and Max and we didn't show Lady and there are lots of concerned comments about what's happened to Lady. We even had people that are like, rest in peace, Lady. <laughs> they just don't know that Ed's overfeeding you and you're obese. Check the rear diff. Okay. Check the transfer case. Install yokes. In, uh, front drive shaft. We need uh, brake hoses, pinion seal, differential vent hose, drag link, tie rod. We're gonna need to uh, charge ORI. Put tighten leaks slash adjust. Rear rock lights. The banana has a longer list than the wrecker now. So there's a reservoir right here that has to be full of oil to lubricate these pinion bearings. And if you just fill the differential and drive down the road, it might be a while before this bearing sees any lubrication. So I always like to leave the seal out till I'm ready to fill the differential and I fill this spot first. That's fine. Okay. Go ahead and spin it one more time and... Oh, that's looking good. Let's just... Gonna go on. Hammer that There's on. Plenty. Okay, now we'll put this on. Oh, Smoking. You never do that to your gears. What? Hammer them like that. Why not? Because it destroys them. It does? We should have torqued that one for sure. That bolt should have been torqued. I even brought in the tool to torque. <laughs> Can't watch this. He's all worried about break-in period, but he has no concern for just totally hammering on the gears. I've, I've never not done it that way. I've set up dozens. And you can say, oh yeah, well you broke the 44. Yeah, I broke the 44 with 37 inch tires, 300 horsepower, and years of day in, day out abuse. What's next? Drive shaft, let's put that drive shaft in. All right, Adams was super fast. We ordered this drive shaft. He called me two hours later, said it was done. We sent Lizzie down to pick it up. Here it is, going in. Ooh. Not a lot of wiggle room. I'm hoping this all fits. Okay, Lizzie, go read the list and let's cross off some things. Check rear dip. Cross it off. Install yokes. Cross it off. 
Front drive shaft. Cross it off. Brake hoses. Don't we gotta find them. So go out in the bin and look for one that says brake parts or something like that. Okay, so Lizzie, what we're looking for out there, and remember there's lots of stuff out there. We're looking for this brake hose out there. It'll look brand new. Got a banjo fitting on this side, so there'll just be a hole through it. And then that on that end. Oh yeah, brakes. Yeah? Cause she's out of Salt Lake. Hey! Or, oh, this yeah. one is the one for the Jeep. There's only one. This is the one. This is it. You found it. We had one. Ta -da. Let's watch this drive shaft. Do you want to come spin this hub? Okay. Okay, rotate it and I'm going to polish this weld. Okay, so it's just barely touching this link. That's a full stuff. It can't get any worse than that because if this wheel drops, it gets better. It gets better. The other one rubbed also. That's the thing. That's the thing about things. Sometimes they rub. Okay, what's next? Lunch? Lunch. Okay, drive shaft is done. All right, let's get real here for a minute. I've got to steer this XJ. I'm going to have to do it with a drag link over here to this knuckle, and I'm going to have to do it with some other stuff. Like, we got some parts here. We've got this part that doesn't fit without some misalignment spacers. We got this part that doesn't fit unless we put an insert in and then ream it out for this angle. We've got these parts that won't fit unless we have misalignment spacers and a stepped tie rod. So what we're doing right now is all these parts that don't fit, we're going to do some machining, machining to get them to all work together and steer this thing. See how that works? See how that's the right thickness? Oh, it's perfect. I eyeballed that and it's perfect. It was. I can't believe how good this is doing. Let's measure. We're going to measure out here a little bit. 0.9754. We're going to measure back in here a little bit. 1.05. So how far off am I? A couple thousandths? Like 60. Well, that one, that's not where the bolt, you're measuring the wrong spot. Okay, I gotta go call another shop. Jolene was helpful, but I got one more place to call. Okay. Okay, Colby, you're in charge of not letting him do anything crazy. Okay. So these actually go in from the bottom right there. I want you to see how precise that is. So here's what Tom may not take, be taking into consideration. The only interface is between this and this tapered. So it doesn't even matter if I get this perfect because this is the final product right there. So Tom knows a lot about precision and measurement, but he don't know nothing about farmer, machining, shade tree, mechanics. That's something I know a lot about. This needs to weld in, so it needs to be welded on the underside. And what I'm doing is I'm doing a counter bore here so we can get a nice bead around the top. Once this is welded in, then I can hone it, ream it to the final taper. The product will be legit. There she is right there. There's the weld we need to fill. So I was getting this all ready to weld up and Tom came out and looked at it and said he wanted to TIG weld it. 
So we're gonna let him do that. I got this all chamfered out so he can just fill that with weld and make it look really good. Look at that, Lizzie. Wow. Do you think we should take weld that? Yes. So this is a new Miller Multimatic 220 welder. It's a MIG welder and a, and a TIG welder. So this is gonna be sweet in our shop because you can switch back and forth between the two super quick. This is the same welder that Lizzie tested at SEMA just oh, barely. Oh yeah, yeah. So we're gonna give it a try in our shop. It worked good down there at SEMA. Wow, that was wider than I thought. <laughs> Done. Transfer case. I'm Next. going to work on the ORI bracket bolt. That one sounds easy to me. I just want to make sure that this is out of the way so it doesn't grind those. So I'm going to grind those off really quick. There's one. There's two. Somebody said that you're wearing off onto me and I'm being more careful. Oh wow. But I think it's the other way. We're gonna we're gonna land in the middle. Lizzie, I need you to vote. Is Tom adopting more of my practices or am I adopting more of his? I think you're both saying the same. There you have oh. it, folks. We have inside information right there from Lizzie. How do you feel about that? I feel like it's gonna work just fine. I think you're right. It's okay. It's not perfect, but I also haven't TIG welded in a long time. Cool. It looks really cool. I think it's going to work. No, it, it looks, looks really hot. Super hot. <laughs> I've got to figure out how sharp these can turn and put steering stops on them. And then once that's done, I can figure out how to set up my ram, center my steering, all that stuff. All metric. Oh, come on. How are we doing? You're going to hit the knuckle. You're hitting the knuckle. It doesn't You're on the knuckle. fit. I can grind the knuckle. What about the brake? I'm on the brake. It's just one thing after another. All that work we just did for the high steer ain't gonna work. Look how far off we are from fitting. These can definitely be ground. I'm not worried. I wouldn't worry about grinding the caliper. But that's not the problem. Look, this is where this needs to be cut out. That what? You mean the wheels with a totally different offset? I think these are designed for like 42s and we're 20 inch wheels. What if we go grab a wheel off a of Super Duty or a spare off a of Super Duty and stick it on here? See how oh, it I'm going to try the Morvera ones first. Significantly, I mean, noticeably different offset. It's clearing the brake. So these wheels will clear the brake calipers. They will not clear, they won't clear this. All right, we don't need this high steer arm right here. So we're gonna cut it first and see if we have a possibility of fitting over the brake calipers. If we do, then I'm formulating a plan over there. We're gonna make this work. This might clear the brake now that it's not getting a weird angle on it. Well, don't rub. That works. A victory. I've waited three and a half hours for a victory, and I just got one. What is it? Uh, tie robin. Tie robin. 
Okay. 0.782. Okay, that's our baby right there. Drilling holes is one of Matt's strengths. He's impressive with a drill. Noticing how well people drill holes is one of Tom's strengths. It's like a human drill press. Like a mag drill. Except he needs nothing to magnet onto. That's what I want. Right done. Okay, now we just need Tighten this up and see how it looks. Looks pretty good. That is looking really good, man. All right, it's time to go home. We are only slightly defeated. I'm gonna check to see if a wheel fits before I leave though. It blends in. Are you gonna be fully defeated if a tire doesn't fit? Yeah. You well, said you were only half defeated. I think it's gonna fit. Fully defeat is pretty hard. It's hard to fully defeat me. You can momentarily fully defeat me, but permanently. Now, that's it. I've learned a lot about Super Duty axles. Stuff you never wanted to know. Yeah. How close are we? You might, you might be able to fit a chopstick in there, maybe. <laughs> toothpicks. Let's see. For sure, toothpicks. Oh, man. That ain't the only question we have here, though. We got one more question. It's going to be pretty much level at ride height, and then stuff is like that. Always okay. And that, and fully droop is there. It's not hitting. All right, we met a few defeats and we met a few victories. I don't know what the ratio is, but it's not feeling super hot. Yeah, it's like one to one. But we're going to be back at it tomorrow morning. Matt came up with some very creative solutions to fix some very difficult problems, and I think they're going to work. We've learned a lot about Super Duty axles in a very short amount of time. See you in a minute. Good morning, we're back. We had a heck of a day yesterday, but the important thing is that we are back. And that's all that matters. That's true. All right, um, Lizzie stopped by the parts store this morning, got us the rod in that we needed. Beautiful, Here it is. that looks right. <laughs> I'm so happy. So now that I feel a little bit better, I can talk about what happened yesterday. So these American iron knuckles are awesome. They're super beefy and I'm running a really weird offset wheel. When I called Ray Sign and said, I want a wheel in this offset, they're like, nobody wants a wheel in that offset, but they got it to me anyway. I'm trying to keep the banana as narrow as possible so I can get into tight trails. Now that we have the Suzuki, that's less important. That's why I'm kind of okay with some of the things that are going on here. Um, we need something that can get on the really narrow trails for the ATVs and the side-by-sides. There's some 50 inch trails all around Southern Utah and they always give me permission to take my 72 inch wide Jeep in there, but now we're gonna have a smaller one. That's a difference for a different story. Well, let me tell you what happened here. So these knuckles are so beefy that I was able to drill a hole to the side of the real hole and it's still beefier than the aftermarket knuckle over there. I measured them. So they measured 9.6, these are 202. So I've still got more meat, the stock meat was 1.6 so they should be plenty strong for what we're doing these knuckles were really made for 20 inch wheels and we're running 17 inch well, wheels I, I think even the positive offset 17s would still work yeah because the the more are narrow too they're more common narrow but they're 
they're on the narrow side of offset. Did the Morvair fit, or mm, they, they were barely close. skimmed? Okay. So if you have the right offset, offset or a 20-inch wheel, these knuckles will fit. So sorry, American Iron, that we did a lot of trimming on your knuckle, but this is going to be an even better test because if they'll survive in this modified form, then the stock ones will be way stronger than what we're doing. This is a rock bouncer knuckle, man. These are tough. Well, they're super tough. All right. All right. So what do we got to do today? There's a couple things. Um, right now, I'm working on getting the mount for the ram assist for this. And then we're doing brakes. All right, I've just got a little bit of PTSD from yesterday. I don't know if I want to start working on this or not. On most of the Ram Assist kits that you see, um, they're having you clamp onto the tie rod with the Ram. I don't like that. It, I think it puts twisting forces on the rod ends. And I know it doesn't matter if you're running Himes, but I've also seen where they flop. You turn one way, the whole thing flops. Just a little bit with the play, it takes the play up. Then you turn the other way, it flops the other way. I don't like that. I like going off from the, the steering arms here. Um, I was told by a lot of smart people that it wouldn't work. Um, we've got them installed, so we're waiting for that shoe to drop. But up until now, they're functioning supreme. That actually saved us once on the Morvair too when we lost the tie rod. He was attached with his ram to the knuckle and we were able to drive it out. The other comment that I got was that since the ram's not moving at the same rate as the steering box, there's gonna be a problem, but it's fluid. Fluid seeks its own level. It doesn't, it, the fluid doesn't even know that that's going on. It finds a balance and yeah. it all works perfect. Yeah. Right poses? Okay, we're working on that. Drag link. Waiting for parts, sort of. Charge ORIs. Waiting to be done. Tighten the links and adjust. Waiting to be done. Fit the tires. Bleed brakes. Waiting for the brakes. Rear rock lights. That we need to look at. ORI bracket and bolt. You can cross that off. And link bolts. Let's come tighten up the link bolts. Okay, okay let's, let's tap this. This is gonna work really good now. Just, just try it. This is they're supposed to tap dry in cast iron. The chips will just fall out. Okay. There's some threads in there. Well, that's pretty good. Significantly looser than I like, but there's so many threads, I don't think it's gonna be a problem. Okay, Lizzie, we need to put our grip rings to work. This is gonna be a compromise because we're pulling Tom out of the equation. We need to figure out how to calculate angle. Not really out of the equation, I'm just doing something else. Okay, Lizzie, I need you to measure from the floor to the end of this. And you're gonna go to the blue. Okay, what do you got, 50 inches? Yeah. Okay. We'll go 49 and a half. Okay, Lizzie, go look down that and tell me if you think that this side is perfectly straight. Actually, if that side. Yeah. All right, let's put a mark right here. That way we know. Okay, let's swing this across this and see what we get. See about where it's going to go. Okay. Okay, measure between those two points. What are we looking for? 49, we're at 52 and a half, 52 and 3 eighths. Okay, so let's move this over here to 49. That's 49 right there. 
Okay. That is safe. Boy, that's a sharp turning radius. We don't even know if that's feasible. We know that 45 degree angles was some number, 50 inches with the length of this. So then we just plotted the same thing out on a horizontal plane and that's what we came up with. So here's what I'm thinking. We can probably turn sharper than the, than the tires will let us with the fenders. I know these can handle more turning angle than the older 60s because they got the bigger U-joint. Okay, Lizzie, let's steer this thing over here. Are we on that line? No, not even close. Oh, we're pretty close. Yeah, we're close. We are close. Little changes here make big changes there. Okay, let's see that. I'd say that's pretty dang close. Okay. Well, if my calculations are correct, and they are, we should be able to do this on the other side with a similar degree of accuracy, but we don't even need to set this up. Tom's morning is about to change. Oh my gosh, look at this. Where'd this come from? I've been hiding it for a uh, special occasion. Alaska? Tom, Tom's in a slightly irritated mood today. So I <laughs> I broke through the safety glass for the emergency smoked salmon. This is gonna fix the mood for sure. Somebody brought this That's to coming us. apart. Thank you to whoever that was. Better get some coffee. It's delicious, but it tastes a little bit like brake fluid. <laughs> Okay, Lizzie, go out in the Connex, go into the bend that's marked brakes. There's a little tombstone shaped thing with a hole in the middle, five eighths, and then a spring clip. I need one spring clip. Here's one spring clip. That's what they look like. And the tombstones are roughly the same size as this. All right. This damn fish. Oh boy. Two of them? Uh, well, that wasn't too hard. Found them. What'd you get for us? Oh, see how easy? No, the other hand. Lizzie, you should make jewelry starting with that. I can't do anything you could, with this. You could weld a big old. Look, no, no, no. Stop. Wow. I don't know which way to do it. Probably both ways. One of each. Look, oh, look at that. What do you guys think? Fancy. Next record games, Super Bowl rings. Yeah? Oh, yeah. oh that's a good idea. Yeah. Put you right there. That's where I want it. Okay, Lizzie. What's next on the list? Can we cross off? Put a half across through that one. Half across. Where do we okay. ground? How much do you want that ball? Okay, let's go to the other side. Tom did You're the exact same one. thing. Testing. Okay. Oh, Ed. Feed them just a tiny bit. They've had a whole bunch of meat today. Oh, so real good. tiny, like... Like... One handful. Like 40. 40 pallets apiece. All right, so now we're going to swap out this master cylinder for the bigger one. It's going to be 11% better. Out with the old. In with the new. Is it going to fit? I don't know. Oh, it fits. It fits good. Mm -hmm. On the edge of a dangerous precipice. situation. On the point of a precipice. Okay, Lizzie. Start just gently, slowly pumping it, but don't go clear to the floor. Two hours later. Did they feel 11% better? Then last week? Sure. She sounded confident. Peanut wants to go for a ride so bad. We do too. We do too, Peanut. We'll take all the dogs with us. Lead brakes. Done. We are still waiting on parts. They're not gonna be here till tomorrow night, guaranteed tomorrow night at 7 p.m. 
We don't have time for that. We've got to get this out and get it tested. So we are going to do what any good farmer would do and we're going to make it work with these and we're just going to kind of hack it together, take it out on the trail. That's what we're doing. Tom's even behind it. What's your opinion on this whole thing? Oh, with the tie rod? This yeah. is super sketchy. Never ever do this. We're going to be welding those right into here at some random length that won't be right and there's no ability to adjust them and we will have totally ruined them at that point. What okay Tom, doing? what I need you to do is just Close be my very, eyes. very, very, very patient and happy. I'm happy at the same time? Yeah. Okay, we're just going to do this. We're not going to feel good about it. We're just going to make it happen. It's going to be ugly and it will probably work. I think that is the sketchiest tie rod I have ever seen in my life. <sighs> Not suitable for amateurs or professionals. So is there a gray area in between? There's got to be because here we are. So now that we have this temporary tie rod here that's only going to do one trail, if we're lucky it will, at least it's all the right measurements so we can get the hydraulic ram figured out. So what's going to happen if we're not lucky? Then we'll have to come get it with the wrecker and that'll be lucky. Oh, either way. Well, that should be much easier. What do you think of that? That is super cool. You think that'll work? I think it'll work. We're missing parts. So we had to cobble this one together. I hope it works. Well, it's the end of the day. I've got to send everybody home. Tomorrow morning we're hitting the trail with Holly and maybe George's, who knows. Good morning, it is test day. Tom is just finishing up the last little bit of welding and we... <laughs> And we're going to take the banana out. You guys asked for it. We're doing triple sevens. We're doing the shoot. I'm probably not going to do slip lock because that's on the other side of the park. But we're going to go get this done. How's it going to do? What's your prediction? It's going to do just fine. Just fine. I think it'll be amazing. All right, before we go test the banana, I wanted to remind you that we are going to be at the Hurricane Easter Car Show Saturday, April 8th. We're going to be there Saturday, April 8th from 9 to 5. All proceeds from this event go to support a nonprofit. Uh, like the last year, they supported the All Abilities Park. Yes, we raised over $100,000 for that cause. Thank you so much. So last year, we raised money to buy the equipment for the All Abilities Park. This year, we're raising it to cover some of the com construction costs. So yeah, come out and see us and support this great cause. Do I have to be a union <laughs> member? No! <laughs> All right, now we got to get out and test the banana, see if it'll do triple sevens and see if it'll climb the chute. All right, so Holly's running a little bit late. Kevin and Brittany were here, so we decided we're going to go run the slip lock trail while we're waiting for Holly, and then we'll come back and do triple sevens and the chute. Bring it on up. Ah, my parts didn't come in for my real tie rod. <laughs> we so, improvised. So we built a junk tie rod. 
Did it just kink? It buckled, yeah. It just, yeah, it kinked forward. <sighs> Get me the winch go. controller, JB. Well, this is em embarrassing and uh, <laughs> predictable. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna call I saw, this, I saw it this morning, I was just like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, perfect. so. I heard quote is perfect. No, I can't. No. I can't. <laughs> You're lucky to That's go the home. one shot. You get that one shot. We're driving out of here in two-wheel drive. Okay, 20 miles an hour. Just drive up there. Tom hated my temporary tie rod, and I loved it. Until? And, and now, I hate my temporary tie rod, and Tom still, still hates it. Uh, yeah, I always hated it. Okay, so we're gonna go back and we're gonna weld some straps to it and then we're gonna hit triple sevens. All right, so it takes a big man to admit when he was wrong. And it takes a bigger man to laugh at that man. And I am not a big man. <laughs> but I'm the bigger man. I told him this wasn't gonna work. It was a horrible idea. It was the worst tie rod in the world. Too those harsh. Are, those are harsh. Is that no. too much? Those are harsh. No, all right, all right. <laughs> it was all true. He did say that. So. So what are we doing now? We're just gonna sleeve it and make it super strong because our parts haven't come yet. They'll be here any minute. So it's gonna be a race to see if it's faster to make a new one with the parts when they arrive or to do something with this horrible thing. Yeah. UPS is finally here, and we're just about done with that that uh, tie rod. Is that what you're waiting for? I hope so. Okay, so now we at least have options. We can slam that in there really fast and not worry about it at all. Yeah, and be done. So I, vote, favor, I vote for that. Thanos. <laughs> That's looking good. Bring that as a trail spare. Yeah. No. I'm going to set it right here to remind us to never do that again. All right, we are ready. We are trail ready. We are trail rated, right? We are now, yes. Yeah, give me a trail rating. <laughs> I'll give you two thumbs up this time. All right, let's go do this before it rains. All right, we got the banana all fixed up, ready for the trail. Jamie's got the weather. It's rainy, off and on. But it's still a beautiful day. Tom, it is a nice day. It's like 50 degrees. It's a perfect day to go test our super good tie rod. This time we won't die, maybe. How's the drive shaft doing now? Much better. I haven't heard it at all. Matt thinks he heard it a tiny bit. I think we're going to make it. There it was. Oh, there. Uh, uh, there it is a little bit. Was that just you?
just too slick to do. I did it before. I didn't listen to Holly and Walter spotting me and that's how I got all these scrapes right here. And then they spotted me through it, but there's just no traction today. Other than that, how's it going? It's been a day of failure. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a great day. It's beautiful. I'm so happy with this. I'm not even worried about my axles or U joints or anything. My gear is nothing. It's just doing it. I am a little worried about the interference between my drive shaft and the links, but that seems to be solving its own problem. All right, so a lot of you asked that I take this up the chute for a test. So here we are at the chute. Mind you, this is the slickest conditions I've ever been in. Been talking to Holly and, and Kevin and Brittany and they say they've never been when it's this slick. It's snowing, so let's do this. Sketchy. Like no. pure pure traction. He was no wedge. Out, really? We missed it? Yeah. Alright, go do it again. <laughs> He's like, I don't know if I want to. Uh, I, I know. <laughs> Holly, I'll get you some stuff here. We turned all our cameras off for you. All right, we did it. We tested the banana, we did slip lock, broke it, we fixed it, we came back, did triple sevens. We did the shoot, we didn't do it backwards. I know some of you asked for that, but the conditions <laughs> the are way yeah. too slick today. today. not the day for that. Not today. Rory said he would come down and spot me through it. So next time Rory's in town, we'll do it. So, uh, totally awesome hanging out with these guys. Hey! A good trail ride day. Thanks for the call, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> yeah you weren't there for the intro? Yeah. She stole his life. I made a call. I said, I, I said, made so a call. we got a call. That's all right. Thanks for watching. So this is where I bent the tie rod, our makeshift hokey tie rod. I'm gonna do the same line, see if we can do it without failure.